to assess the convergence of a series that satisfies these three criteria. And how does it work? How does the integral test work? Let's just take our example that's up here right now, which is looking at the series, the summation of 1 over n squared. You can read that. Let me write it a little bigger. And I'd like to know whether or not this is a convergent series. We actually talked about this series on Friday, and we sort of speculated on its convergence, but we didn't come to a conclusion that we could prove rigorously. Uh, the job of today is to do that and then also to generalize, to figure out what we can say about polynomial series in general based on what the exponent in that polynomial happens to be. What is the degree of the term? So what I'm going to be asking you to do in your groups in a minute is to take a series similar to this one and then to come up with a couple of sketches. And the first sketch that I'd like for you to come up with is something like what does the integral of the continuous function that connects these dots look like? So in our example here, the integral from 1 to 4 of 1 over x squared with respect to x. Well, what is the geometric meaning of an integral, a definite integral from 1 to 4 of 1 over x squared dx? What does it look like? By the way, we're looking at a graph. The blue curve up here is a graph of y equals 1 over x squared. So what does the integral from 1 to 4 of 1 over x squared look like? The it's the area under the graph. It's the area between the graph of y equals 1 over x squared and the x-axis. So it's that area in red right there. And we can actually compute the exact value of this, right? We can just find an antiderivative and substitute in the limits of integration, and we can get an answer. Antiderivative of this would be negative 1 over x. Evaluate that from 1 to 4. We get negative 1 fourth minus negative 1. That's 3 fourths. So 3 fourths is the area enclosed in this red area right here. On the other hand, we would also like to know how the value of that integral, 3 fourths, relates to the value of some partial sums of this infinite series, partial sums of 1 over n squared. And so here's what we'll do, the other sketches I'm going to be asking you to come up with. And that is, what does the sum n equals 1 to 3? Actually, do we do 1 to 3? No, let's do 1 to 4. Mm. No, strike that. Let's do 1 to 3. The sum n equals 1 to 3 of 1 over n squared. Well, we can write out the terms of that partial sum. 1 over 1 squared, 1 over 2 squared, and 1 over 3 squared. 1 plus a quarter plus a 9. And the trick, then, is to take each of those terms and represent it as a rectangle. 1 over 1 would be a rectangle with a base of 1 and a height of 1. I would call that this first rectangle that we see here in orange, 1 over 1. Then 1 over 4 would be a rectangle with a base of 1 and a height of 1 fourth. That might be this one right here, the second rectangle. And then 1 ninth likewise, with a base of 1 and a height of 1 ninth. I'll make that this next rectangle right there. And so then a completely valid question is how does the value of this partial sum compare to the value of the integral? And the value of the integral is 3 fourths. But we're going to use the picture to figure out how those two quantities compare one to another. But in order to make that happen, what I need to do is figure out a way of taking these rectangles, these three rectangles here, whose areas add up to the value of this partial sum, 1 plus a fourth plus a ninth, that's going to be that 4 plus 9, 13 plus 36, uh, 49 over 36, you know, whatever. Figure out how that relates to our integral. And in order to make that happen, all I need to do is take these three rectangles and just slide them over. Once I've slid these rectangles over, if I put my drawing back in here, then my integral from 1 to 4 
was this, again, this red area under the curve. So there's my integral, 1 over x squared. But now that I've placed my rectangles so that their base is exactly the same as the base of this integral, now I can make a comparison and ask you which one of these quantities is larger, the area of the rectangles or the area under the graph? The area of the rectangles, because they're sort of hanging out over here above the graph. The summation 1 over n squared and running from 1 to 3 is bigger than the area under the graph. All we had to do was slide the rectangles over to, to make that conclusion. So that's the first observation, that the sum, n equals 1 to 3, is bigger than the integral, x equals 1 to 4. Meanwhile, if I were to look at it the other way, look at it the way that the original picture were drawn, then the way that the original picture was drawn, if I <coughs> slide the rectangles backwards to where they were, Now putting in the area under my graph, once again, three quarters, that area is my integral, 1 to 4, 1 over x squared, dx. I can say for sure that that area is bigger than these rectangles now which live under the graph. And these rectangles which live under the graph are a quarter plus a ninth plus a sixteenth. And that's the sum not from 1 to 3, but that's the sum from 2 to 4 of 1 over n squared is smaller than the integral. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to use an integral either to decide that a certain sum is bigger than the integral or to decide that a certain sum is smaller than the integral. And what we ultimately end up with is the following. If I put all of this uh, onto one inequality, into one equation, into one big grand statement about how sums and integrals can be related one to another. Let me get a blank page here. There we go that what I can say is that the integral from 1 to 4, 1 over x squared dx, is smaller than something, and it's also bigger than something. What it's smaller than is it's smaller than the sum. We decided it was smaller than the sum running from 1 to 3, 1 over n squared. And we decided that it was bigger than the sum running from 2 to 4 of 1 over n squared. And everything about these three expressions is the same except for what we have going on in our <coughs> limits, our limits of integration or the limits on our sum. So we can bound the value of an integral in between the values of two sums. But that turns out not to quite always be what we want. Usually what we want to do is the opposite. Usually we're starting with a sum, and we want to bound it between the values of two integrals. So let's say I want to be able to bound the value of the sum of, let's say, n running from 1 to 10 of 1 over n squared. So this is 1 plus a half plus, sorry, 1 plus a fourth plus a ninth plus a sixteenth plus a twenty-fifth dot, 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 all the way up to 1 over 100. And I would like to bound the value of this sum, n running from 1 to 10. Well, using the inequality on the right here, with a 10 upstairs, I can find that the value of the sum is greater than or equal to the value of an integral. And my integral, that it's greater than or equal to, is going to start at 1, but it's going to go up how far? Eleven. 
and it's the integral from 1 to 11 of 1 over x squared with respect to x. And so the sum is going to be bigger than that. And then on the other side, I can put another inequality and find out what the value of the sum can be no larger than. And for that, I can use this piece and run my integral now of 1 over x squared. Not from 1 to 10, but what do I have to adjust this time? So here's the secret on how I'm going to do this. So what I'm really going to do is adjust my sums index gets decreased by 1 to make the limit of integration. And this is a little bit fishy, but we're, we'll repair that in a second. And in particular, here's one more adjustment that I'm going to make. Because 1 over x squared is positive, the value of the integral from 1 to 11 will always have to be greater than or equal to the value of the integral from 1 to 10. So just to make this whole series of inequalities easier on the eyes, I'm also going to adjust the upper limit of this integral to be 1 to 10 instead. So what this means, and this is a little bit screwy for a reason we'll see in a second, but what this means is that if I want to understand the value of this partial sum, I can bound it in between the values of these two integrals. And the only difference in these integrals is where is my lower limit. A lower limit of 1 on the left-hand side for that integral, a lower limit of 0 on the right-hand side for the integral which is bigger than the value of our sum. And so the first task for your group today, and that's this, I think as far as we're going to take that uh, for the hour, is to take your series and go through the motions of what we just did. Okay, so draw a sketch that shows me which how the, the integrals in the series that you have compare one to another. And then take the next step and try to evaluate the values of those integrals and see what it tells you about whether or not the series is going to converge or diverge.